second night of a back to back, just trying to be aggressive. Um, you know, add energy to this to our to our ball club. We've been playing a lot of games, and I knew coming in on the back to back, we were maybe been a little tired after last night. So, um, trying to put pressure on the rim, put pressure on the defense. Just play my game. You know, Memphis had an advantage in most of the statistical categories. How did you guys pull it out? How did you end up winning? We just got a timely stops and made timely shots. Uh, I mean, after you know they scored a lot of points in the first half, you know we held them to 45 points in the second half. Um, even even with them starting seven seven from the three the three point line, they had 10 threes that half. They were beating us in all aspects, free throw attempts, fast break points, everything. We just kept our composure. That's what we do. Uh, we were a very resilient team and. Uh, you know, they haven't played in three or four days. We knew they were going to have a lot of energy, a lot of young guys, a lot of veterans as well, but uh, just came in with that, that uh, resiliency as we always had uh, since the season started. Uh, you know AD's game so well before you became teammates with him. I think he had eight deflections total, the five blocks, three steals. How does the way that he's there occupy the paint, how does that impact the way you play on defense uh, and the way you kind of can push guys into there if you need me? Well, yeah, I mean, when we got guys like AD, JaVale, Dwight, Especially AD, his ability to uh, not only protect the rim, but also guard guards, guard forwards, get deflections, get blocks. It just adds another layer to our defense. And uh, you know, like I said, you know, um, you know, for us coming on the back to back like we did, we give 108 after the way they started off. Uh, it was a pretty good game for us. You won both the last two games on getting turnovers on an inbound pass. How do you feel about your guys' preparation in some of these late game situations? Well, our coaching staff prepares. They do great scouting. Give us great video throughout the course of the game. Let us know what teams are running or what to be prepared for. And then, uh, you know, we just trust, um, you know, our communication. Uh, we know what we're doing coming out of a timeout, no matter if we're up or down. And then we rely on that. So, um, you know, we've been able to get stops, you know, at the, at the end of the ball game, two nights in a row, and it's, it's worked to a wins. It's a long way to go, but through 16 games, this is the best start to your career. Uh, what do you attribute that success to? Um, <clears throat> I don't know, we're, just playing, we're playing really good basketball, um, not only at home, but on the road as well. Um, you know, we, we feel real good about where we are today, but we don't feel great about where we want to be. And, uh, and, and that's okay because it's a long season and we want to continue to get better. So, um, you know, we want to continue to improve, but um, it's a good start for us. But, you know, we're, we're, not, uh, we're not satisfied at all. Um, but we're extremely, um, you know, excited about the process. Last Frank, thing. Frank, Frank said that he um, thought that you guys might start opening a dialogue with the log, sorry, a dialogue with the league about the way you were officiated tonight and not getting on the line. Do you think there's something bigger at play? Has there been a theme with that, or was it done before they did? No, it's been a theme for me personally. Um, you know, pretty much in my career, especially over the last few years. You can talk to Dave about it. He, he knows. He knows. Just ask Dave about it. I mean, I would take 27 shots, nine of them is threes. But for the most part, I'm living in the pain. And, uh, you know, you look at my arm right here, these are. No, I don't, not you personally. But uh, <laughs> if you look at my arm right here, these are four or five that happened in the last two games that were not, they were, weren't caught at all. You know, so, and it's not me just, you know, just going to the hole, going to the basket. And, um, you know, so, but, but that can't stop me. Like I said, it didn't stop me tonight, no matter what. I got to continue to go. But, you know, it, being able to get to the free throw line is something that allows our defense to, to get in good good position, it sets our defense, it slows the game down at times, gives us a good rhythm, it relaxes me as well. So, you know, I know I'm getting hit, but at the end of the day, I just got to keep going. What kind of response did you get from officials when you're trying to do this? I'll tell you off camera. <laughs> uh, uh, Frank also said he was he was trying he was hoping that he wouldn't have to play you so many minutes tonight on the second of a back to back. Um, does that enter your mind at all, sort of preserving your minutes for, for the bigger picture of the season? What's the bigger picture? I'm living in the moment. Uh, we're not promised tomorrow. You know, I love Coach and uh, what the coaching staff are doing, and you know, I think it's you know he, he's doing what's best for the team, and I you know obviously I respect that for sure. You know, and, you know we're gonna go with what Coach says, but at the end of the day. You know, you, you think too much about the future, you lose sight of what's going on in the present. And that's just who I am. It's always how I've been. And I prepare myself mentally, physically, and spiritually to be able to go out and endure anything um, if I'm in the lineup. Last night, you uh, had a game-ending steal tonight. You moved into the top 15 all-time in steals. What's been the key for you to be able to you know, rack those up over the years? Anticipation. Um, anticipation. Um, being in the right place at the right time. Um, being healthy. Uh, for the majority of my, of my career so far, and um, and also being around some really good defensive coaches, you know, um, 
you know, from the, from Mike Brown to you know, Eric Spostra, Coach Lou, and their coaching staff, uh, to now Coach Vel Coach Vogel, um, you know, and so on and so on. Throughout my whole career, I've been around some really good defensive-minded coaches who put me and put my teammates in position to be be able to jump past lanes, you know, but not affect the defense. Um, be able to read and be prepared for what sets is happening. Uh, so that helps. The league's Last considering uh, sacrificing regular season games to have an in-season tournament that would happen sometime between November and Christmas. Uh, and then also, also considering reseeding in the playoffs after the second round to assure that the, the championship could potentially include the, the best two teams in the league record-wise. Uh, what would you think about actually playing in a league with those types of changes? Uh, talk about it on Monday. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.